Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today we are being serenaded by honeybees. Thousands, thousands of honeybees. And what they're doing is they're going, this uh, buck brush has got this little bitty blossom on it. You can see. They're going after the nectar, the blossom, the, uh, all the pollen that's in there. There's <laughs> a, a spider. Looks like he collected one. He caught him a honeybee. There's still thousands left in here. Right across the field, actually on both sides of me, somebody was saying, commenting that day, well, you need to have bees to make honey to have with your grass-fed beef. I'm like, I haven't even, I don't have time to comment on every comment, but um, I'll comment here. Um, we've got bees, and we've got uh, hives on that side of the field. Compliments of our neighbor. She's got like four or five great big hives up there. And then our landowner on this side of us, he's got bees right over there by that tree. And he's got another hive uh, on the other side of that field. Uh... So we've got hives on both sides of this farm. And then of course Jan and Brenda, they've got hives all over too. That is cool. Man, I just, I came by here and I thought, what is that humming noise? It's not much of a flower, but it's, it's really attracting the bees. And it's buck brush. Um, we call it buck brush, and uh, it's not it's not something that's very palatable in the summertime. But the sheep, the sheep will eat the red berries in the winter time. They kind of like it. And uh, so, yeah, Isaac and Connor and I were uh, putting these paddocks in this morning, and uh, Ben's on vacation. He went back to Mass to just to see his family. And uh, he'll be back next week. This is a, what we're doing is we're getting the weekend put in. And uh, I'm going to go look up Connor and Isaac and let them explain what we did here. This is the first time we've ever fenced this, this direction. And it just goes to show you, you know, you, folks, it, I can't overemphasize the importance of having outside influence on your farm, young folks that look at things differently than we do. And you know, we've, I've been on this farm for 20 some years and you know, I try and think outside the box and I do quite a bit. And, but it's just nice to have other people thinking different ways. And so I'm gonna let Isaac, he's the one that came up with it. I'll let him explain what we did here. And uh, I'm excited to see how they graze this paddock. Uh, this one was clipped the same time as those others. Uh, it's one of the, uh, let's see, I clipped one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I only clipped five paddocks on this farm. That's when it stopped raining. Well, it just wasn't growing back. It wasn't raining when I clipped them, but it got dry and it got hot. And uh, actually the first th three weeks of June, were more brutal than anything we've seen in July so far. I mean, it was hot and no and no rain, and the plants just stopped growing. And so, you know, I, I see comments. People say, "Well, Greg, you know, he he just goes after and clips just because he he wants to or whatever." No, there's a lot going into it. And one is, first of all, it's landowners. You want to keep the land looking nice, and this looks beautiful and. This is a farm that the landowner told me after the first year I had at least. He goes, Greg, you keep it looking like this. He said, it's beautiful. He said, look at my neighbors. He said, it looks like crap. He said, your place looks like a giant park. He said, I never want to sell it as long as you keep doing this. And I'm like, that was my red flag right there that I needed to heed what he was saying. And you can see this little patch right here. There's a few weeds. <laughs> I missed this spot. I didn't mow it. It was so dry. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to get this. It wasn't much here to mow anyway. But it, 
it's amazing what came back on the rest of it. It's just unbelievable. So the bees are getting all these clover blossoms. Um, the folks on each side of me, they're getting their hives filled up with honey. And we're getting all of our plants a good pollination. You know, and without bees, folks, we're in pretty deep trouble. We need, we need to have the bees. And uh, if we don't, we could be in some serious trouble. Are you adjusting the string? Are you, you got it turned on? This is a this is a tank that's fed out of the bottom of the pond. So when we built the pond, the landowner and I put a pipe in the bottom of it. This is our lane. Is it coming out? Yep. Well, it's not now, but it was. Did you shut that gateway up there? It was already shut. It was good. I couldn't remember if I shut it when I was clipping pastures or not. Um, I want y'all to come up here. I want you to show, do your finger pointing how you put that paddock in <laughs> and why you did that. I thought it was a good way to do it as soon as you said it. There's a, yeah. So this, this is the paddock that you normally put in right here. Yeah. This one. So kind of tell what you got going on. So the paddock is a long, what do you take? It's like 20, is it 20 acres? Yeah, there's 20 acres. 20 in this. acres. And so there's a lot of like trees and there's two ditches that go up there. Um, it stretches all the way to the, the woods line and then it ends down here. Um, so we split this and this will be one paddock. That'll be the last paddock in this piece. So how many did you get off of this paddock feeding this water tank? It's three. Three? Yeah. Three half day. Mm -hmm. And so normally what we'll do is... Let's go up here and you can see it. Yeah, we'll put yeah. this one in here. And then uh, the other paddock will split crossways along here. Along the rectangle will make kind of three squares. Um, and we usually let them into this centerpiece first because they have the tank. Then we push them up on top and then we put them down on the bottom. But the problem with that is when they go into this centerpiece, they'll graze this off. And then when we move them up top, they don't really like to go uphill uh -huh. and away from the water. They want to go down that way. Right. And so we don't get that good a graze. Right. Always, they always eat this more than that one down there. And so we decided. To start up there and give them that top piece first mm -hmm. and then bring make a lane down to the water and then they'll get the middle piece second and then they'll get this bottom piece last well, i bet you we get twice a good a graze yeah definitely do some more trampling mm -hmm. more, yeah more yeah so the longer and narrower your rectangle is why do you get more trampling because they have to they have to walk back and forth more and so okay put more forage on the ground on the ground and why would you want to put it on the ground uh it increases your litter bank increases the soil cover um keeps your soil cooler mm -hmm. yeah yeah we like to call it uh you're putting the deposit in the bank and you're going to draw some interest on that later well in this case we're going to get some interest today if you put money in the bank you don't get any interest <laughs> <laughs> so and the nice thing about it right now, since you brush hog this, usually that's pretty lignified and woody and they don't usually like it. But now that you brush hog, since you brush hog, it's all super tender. So yep. we'll get a good graze and hopefully, you know, next rotation, it'll still be vegetative and, and tender. Right. And we, we won't have to ever clip this again this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, you know, I got a lot of people commenting, oh, Greg just wasted his money after clipping and he likes clipping and, you know, he's understocked, he needs more cattle. Do you think we were understocked uh, the first two weeks of June? Mm -mm. No. Well, the thing was, we we did a really good job this year 
because we were so heavily stocked of keeping ahead of the spring flush like we had some seed heads mm -hmm. but a lot of them we kept off with the cattle there was a few farms right that had some seed heads and weeds and stuff but so on a percentage basis how much have we clipped i mean not six percent ten percent yeah not a lot <laughs> i would say maybe not even ten percent yeah it's what one two three four five paddocks did you clip minuses no, so uh -uh. Just, just five paddocks. I couldn't get in minuses. Yeah. Well, the cows are in there. Yeah, the cows just nailed it. Yeah. yeah. But so the other thing, and one of the things that Ian Michelinus has commented in the past, that my friend from South Africa, which is, I'd put him right up there with any grazer in the world, and Ian hates machinery. He absolutely despises it. And he used to call my truck that I had, I had a white Dodge with that trailer, he called that the white elephant. <laughs> <laughs> he'd come every year and he's like, Greg, what do you, I see you still got the white elephant over there. I'm like, Ian, get off my case. I, I got to have that white elephant. We, you know, we, we sell and trade livestock all the time and you just can't hire all that down. Hire it all out at the, you know, at the top of a hat. Anyway, I was defending why I had the trailer. But he, he's changed his tune on clipping. Um, he said, you all in America, he said, you know, if you don't have enough animals to keep it vegetative, by all means, clip it because you've lost the energy. And the energy, what he's talking about is the energy in the grass tips. Once it goes mature, that energy's gone. And until that plant starts regrowing again, you're not going to get it back. And so when it comes down to animal performance, especially going into winter right now, we're going to be going into fall. We're not. Here I am. It's July. <laughs> yeah. It's July. It's degrees yesterday. By golly, it's winter. It's winter, you know. I'm already thinking about winter. You know, you got to start thinking about it in, you know, into July 1st of August. So we're in stockpile mode. Well, if you can put another body condition score of, you know, 100 pounds or more on a cow just by keeping more energy in your grass, folks, it doesn't take much to clip this ground, especially if you got a smaller tractor. If you've got a great big old tractor, it's going to burn more fuel, but you keep your engine at about half RPMs. It, I clipped all this with, it wasn't much over like 15 maybe 20 i don't think it was 20 gallons like 15 gallons of diesel and so the the weight gain that we're going to get off is just going to be through the roof and uh you can see the neighbor over there we didn't clip that um it was wet it was kind of getting uh, i think they, well what it was the cows were down in there and they, they did a good job on that but now it looks kind of woolly and that landowner is one that's kind of i won't say he's picky he just wants it looking nice and so that's one that if I don't clip it, he will. And I do not want him clipping it because uh, his idea of mowing and my idea of mowing is a little bit different. He, he, he takes it down like his yard. And then it pretty much cuts our winter stockpile in half. So I want to make sure that I clip that. And I'm going to clip it high. And it, that'll please him. Just we can go down and not see all the weeds and we can still grow some winter stockpile. But, you know, we covered that a little bit the other day. You've got to make sure your landowners are in sync with what you're doing or you could lose the lease and you know when you lose the lease you're out of the business so yeah i'm excited what it's going to look like guys when we bring the cows in here yeah, yeah. it'll be cool we've never split it like this before so there is some beautiful forage in here in there yeah yep look how wide these leaves are on these plants i mean that's that's that love grass yeah i mean put your finger up there it's that's close to an inch wide it's just now putting the seed head out, so it's tender enough, they're going to nail that. And what are they going to get with it? Just a little bit of this white clover. I wanted to show you all. Come over here. Where is it at? Yeah, right up here. Check this out. I heard this buzzing sound. I'm standing here checking that wire. Honeybees. There's no beehive in there. Yeah. They're going after the pollen on those little blossoms on the the buck brush. Yeah. And that's a little bitty blossom. They are all over They're it. all over it. They got a, they got a hive somewhere. Well, yeah. we got Isaac right over by that tree. Yeah. And, there's, oh, yeah. and there's hives on this end over here too. So we're sandwiched. We got bees on both sides. Makes you want to put out more beehives. <laughs> Pollinators. I mean, there's 
I'm guessing there's probably a thousand bees right in here. Connor, why don't you start counting them? <laughs> Be here all day. Did you see this, guys? This, this spider, it looks like he caught one of them yeah. In, yeah. His, in his web. I think that is a bee in there. And he wrapped them up. I think this one has one, too. Does it? Or oh, two of them, actually. Oh, he's got two of them. Oh, he's he just wrapping, caught a third one. He's wrapping up another one. Yeah, he just caught that one. I Spiders, just you got to leave our bees alone. <laughs> he picked a good spot for a web. Man. Down. No, he got a grasshopper down there. Yeah. See? The little Katie did. See? He's green. Yeah. It's green. That's a Katie did, but they, that is definitely a bee right there. Are they the yeah. black? What are they? The name of those spiders, you know, you remember? I call them garden spiders. I don't know what they're they the are. The big yellow ones that yeah. are starting to come out. They're still small because they're growing. It looks like this. I haven't seen the big ones yet. Yeah. But they're all over here. All kinds of spiders. Man, look what the uh, Japanese beetles have done to that multiple rose bush. Oh, here's another one just got caught. There, there, there's one right there. He's absolutely stripping that bush of leaves. They like multiferous bushes. One of those little ones. Did he catch one? Yeah, a little kitty did. Oh, he caught a kitty did. I thought you said he caught one of our bees. No, that's a little baby spider. Oh, he got him a kitty did. Yep. That's what you get when you have soil life. We're feeding all the critters, so we like to see spiders. As you walk, you look and the ground just moves. Yeah. Man, look at that. That is crazy. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's just live underneath our feet. And you know, a lot of people freak out and they start seeing lots of grasshoppers. Um, I used to lose a lot of grass to grasshoppers when I wasn't watching the way I was grazing. But now we don't. We got so much forage that we don't have any bare ground. So folks, if you got a lot of bare ground on your farm, that's where the grasshoppers lay their eggs. And so you're going to have tons of grasshoppers. So how do you get rid of them? Management. Don't graze so short, longer recovery periods. Let that grass fill in, stop haying your land, and uh, you'll finally get rid of the grasshoppers. You'll have some, but you're not going to have a, a plague. I'm trying to get you some fish bait there, I think. <laughs> no, I'm just going to eat it. Oh, you're going to eat the grasshopper? Yeah, good protein. <laughs> just kidding. Here's a. Sure <laughs> yeah, I think you're serious. Here's the uh, red top. This real succulent, little delicate grass in there. That's red top. Hmm. That's a cool season. They love it. There's so, a lot of different. There's just yeah. There's so much diversity. Sedges in nuts, nuts edge and... This is a smart weed right here. This is the one, the reason they call that smart weed. If you take that weed right there and rub it on your lip real good, <laughs> it smarts. It's, <laughs> it'll start burning. And there's nothing you can do to get rid of it and just let time kind of, you can wash your face and it'll still have a sting to it. They call it smart weed, but cattle love it. I don't guess it burns their tongue. It's like maybe pepper. it does. Like yeah, it maybe it's like pepper yeah. on the grass. Yeah. <laughs> Gives a little flavor. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. It's getting warm out, and uh, we still got some things we want to get done this morning before it gets hot. And uh, we'll see you all next time. And hit that subscribe button on the way out. And I wanted to give a plug for uh, the Timeless Fence uh, Conference in Tennessee. That's going to be in September. Check out our website and uh, when that date is. And I'm going to be there speaking along with some other folks. And uh, we'll see you there. You all take care, and uh, have a great day.